Hi everyone, this is Moni Singh and welcome to Teaching STEM. Today we are going to talk about the four dimensional method of learning STEM or STEAM. Now, before I get into that, uh, let's think a bit about our movie watching experience. Now, in the olden days, it was the one dimensional um, movie watching, right? We All we had was um, black and white, silent movies and then um, it became two-dimensional where we start to see sound in the movies and also color that started to come and more recently we have seen uh, the three-dimensional movies where you get the contextual depth of what's uh, what's happening the objects on the screen and if you have been to theme parks, uh, theaters, you can also see the four dimensional experiences sometimes where maybe there's water splashing on the screen and then you feel like water coming on your face or wind blowing on the screen and you feel like you're getting wind on your own face as well. So that's the four dimensional learning. Or if you're actually in the, um, on the Ferris, uh, Ferris wheel yourself, you experience that wind on your face, right? That's that's the four dimensional effect that we find um, in our movie watching experience. So we said that why can't we make our STEM learning four dimensional, multi dimensional, just like our movie watching experience? And that's what I challenge myself to do right at the onset of launching STEM for Kids. So a decade ago, we said we are not going to be complacent with just this one or two dimension of learning. We had to go for the full four dimensional learning. And that's what we created. And I know that many of you have asked about what is it and how does it work. So today I'm going to give you a glimpse into the four dimensional learning method and how it brings the holistic learning together for students. All right, so let's look into the different dimensions that comes with the four dimensional learning. Now on the left hand side uh, top corner there you notice the core ideas. Now with any kind of program, any kind of learning that you see, of course core ideas is a must, right? What it is, whatever context, whatever concept you're teaching, there has to be something that you're focusing on, right? So that's a given. What is it? That's a given. You got to cover that to give children at least something, some learning coming out of that, that activity, that class that you're doing with children, right? So that's the first dimension and that's the one dimension only. Now let's go to the to the um, below the core ideas, still staying on the left hand side. So the cross cutting concepts. Now, what happens is that we utilize as adults, we utilize a lot of heuristics when it comes to learning and looking at, you know, making sense of what's happening in the world. And we as teachers, as educators need to point those cross-cutting concepts for children. And when we think about uh, STEM for kids and the way we look at cross-cutting concepts, we look at it in two particular ways. The first one is to let the children know about some of the cross-cutting concepts. So let's take an example. I'm going to call out some numbers. All right. One, three, five, seven, nine, now, many of you already know that I'm going in a certain pattern here. I'm calling out odd numbers. And if we continue with that pattern, the next number that I call out is going to be 11. And you'd be right. So we detected the pattern. And based on that, we are able to make predictions on what's going to happen next. Now, all these are learning heuristics. And again, it's important to call out these heuristics for children. So another example is if you are looking at, uh, let's say, Apple Core, and you're trashing that Apple Core, right? Now, knowing that it's, a, it's an organic waste, we know that a couple of days later, if we check back on that, that trash that we created, 
it would have rotten, there might be some stink associated with it. Whereas if we had a piece of paper that we just crumbled and threw in the trash, we will not see those characteristics, right? The rot or the stink with it. So again, based on certain parameters, we're able to make predictions or many times when it, for example if you look at this the structure of our skin there are multiple layers in the, in that in, a, in that uh, structure so now you're looking at different structure that comes into play so those are learning heuristic those are cross cutting concepts they apply uh, from one subject area of learning to another and for kids to understand that these concepts apply is very important now the second way that we apply the cross cutting concepts is across industries so the first one was across subjects, right? Uh, the, the, the concept of pattern and cause and effect, those are applying across various uh, topics of learning. But then we also take it and apply that cross industry. So for example, if you are learning about creating animations in a computer programming class or a computer programming industry, you can take that same concept of you know, creating animations and apply that to a totally different industry like a biomedical industry or an aerospace industry. And pointing again those cross connections to children is very important because if you think about it, most innovations that we are seeing happening, most value creation that's happening is happening where we see industry borders being crossed. And where this blurring happens, that's where we're seeing the most innovations going on. So that's the second dimension. Now let's look at the third dimension, and that's going on the right side top corner, career connections and practices. Now this is focusing on what to do. Um, so really making sure that children understand real life careers associated with whatever they are learning about. And it is so powerful because once children understand the real careers, it starts to address the so what question for them. If I learn this, here is where I can apply it. It's very powerful. And not only that, also showing them the practices which are, which are so relevant in real careers. So practices like researching, engineering, designing, or the four C skills of uh, being the skills of communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. Showcasing all that for, for, ch for children, again, creates a very nice uh, holistic learning for the child to think about STEM, STEAM, or STREAM. Now, those are the three dimensions, okay? Let's talk about the fourth dimension, which is the social emotional learning. It is so intense, so powerful, we cannot, we cannot overlook it. And by the way, that's the area we see most of the times completely ignored, unfortunately. Social emotional learning, that's basically comes down to how it feels to the child. Because at the end of the day, STEM fields are not easy. They do require a lot of perseverance. There's a lot of failure that's part of learning STEM or doing STEM. And when the child is able to understand that all these things come naturally and they know how to deal with those failures so they can continue persevering, that's important and that cannot be overlooked. And of course, the social skills of being able to communicate with others, um, you know, being able to work with others and all those things become very, very important as well. So that my friends, that's the four dimensional learning. And this is something that you look at as you develop your STEM STEAM programming, making sure that you're covering those four dimensions and that will create the right sort of experience, the impactful experience that you're looking for your children. Now, remember I talked with you about before, you know, there are four foundational elements that come when, it, uh, when you think about teaching STEM, immersion, repetition, creation, and dealing with the dips. So dealing with the dips is completely false in that fourth quadrant, the fourth dimension of social emotional learning. And immersion comes from dealing with the first three dimensions, 
You, you immerse the child in an experience by giving them the core ideas, by giving them the cross-cutting concept, by letting them know what kind of careers exist that will be utilizing these concepts that the child is learning. And of course, repetition and the creation is basically how you make all of this count together. So I hope that was helpful as you consider and you think more about your uh, STEM classes. And with that, we will end this uh, discussion today and keep thinking in four dimensions, right? Our STEM learning does not need to be anything below our entertainment because remember, kids are getting entertained in so many different uh, exciting ways. So to, the way to keep STEM learning exciting, think four dimensions. And with that, we'll end this discussion. Thank you so much.